Once again, Quasar takes something as simple as a checkbox component and makes it really easy to use by default, but then gives you all the flexibility you need to turn it into whatever you like. So let's go ahead and use it. Q dash checkbox. And then we're going to need to model something here. So let's model selected. So we'll come down here and then say import ref and we'll pluck that out of view. And then we can say const selected is equal to, how about we set it to false by default? And there we go. We've got our checkbox and we can toggle it on and off. Easy as that. Now the next thing you'll probably wanna do is add a label. So we can set the label equal to selected, save it. And now we get that label showing up. And another thing you can do is actually throw it onto the other side. So at the moment, the label's on the right side, but if you want that on the left side, you can say left dash label, and then that label's going to appear on the left side. But anyway, let's get rid of that and move back to a simpler example. We can also do some interesting things with modeling the data. So if we say here, true dash value is equal to, how about on? And then we can say false value is equal to off. And now let's set selected equal to off by default. Save it, refresh the page. And in order to see this, we're going to need to throw in a pre-tag just so we can actually look at what we're playing with. Selected. And notice that I've got for my class on the page column and flex center. I do that so that the pre-tag appears underneath. It just makes it easier to display. So you might want to change this to column and flex center rather than flex and flex center. All right, let's have a look at that. And there we go. Now we're modeling the strings on and off. What else can we do? Well, we can change the toggle order. So check this out. If I set the ref equal to nothing by default, then notice that we get this indeterminate state. That's what it's called, indeterminate. We don't know if it's on or if it's off. And then when we select it for the first time, it's set to true, or in this case on. And then when we select it again, it just toggles between on and off. All right, so to begin with, we get that indeterminate state, but from then on, it's just true or false. Now, what we can actually do is change that first state that we go to. So when I first click it, notice that we get an on state. I'll refresh the page and show you again. We get on by default. What we can do now is say toggle dash order is equal to false true. And that means the first state we'll get is false rather than true. So let's have a look at it now. And it looks like I didn't save that properly. Let's try it again. And there we go. Notice that the first state is now false. Might not be something that you ever need, but it's nice to know you have that extra flexibility if you need it. Another thing we can do is throw in the indeterminate state as one of the options. So if we say here indeterminate dash value, save it, refresh the page. Now it's indeterminate, false, true, and then back to indeterminate again. And that didn't work because it's not indeterminate value, it's toggle indeterminate. Toggle dash indeterminate. There we go. Let's give it another try. And there we go. Now you can see indeterminate is one of the states there. But what we can do, which I kind of just alluded to, is set indeterminate dash value. So you might set that equal to something like unknown. And I'm going to shift this up so that it sits with these other options here. So we got true value on, false value off, indeterminate value unknown. Let's save that, refresh the page. And now we get off, on, and then unknown for the undeterminate state. Phew, okay, so that's kind of finicky. Let's move on to something a little bit more exciting. I'm going to remove most of this. Let's just bring us back to label and then the modeling there. So you may also want to toggle things on and off inside of an array. For example, let's change this from selected to selections. And then we'll make this a ref of an array and say car, boat, plane. And then what we can do is say, we're going to model that array of selections, but the value that this is modeling inside of that array is car. So by saying val here, we can say, hey, when this is an array, I want you to model the value car inside of that array. I'll show you what I mean. We'll change this to selections. So we've got car, boat, plane. 
And now when I toggle that on and off, car is added and removed from the array. So that's really good to know. This is a really common thing where you want to be able to toggle things within an array. So that's possible by setting value here. And then of course, you would probably have a few checkboxes. One of them is going to be equal to boat, and then another one will be equal to plane. And then you change these to plane and boat. And then that one to car. Let's have a look at that. There we go. Now we can toggle each of those on and off. Pretty cool. Now, another thing that you might want to do is toggle things on and off inside of an object. In fact, that's how I prefer to do it. I think it's a little bit clearer, easier to understand, and it's easier when you're using checkboxes as filters. So if we remove these value options here, now inside of selections, we can say dot car, and then here we can say dot boat, and then here we can say dot plane, and then turn selections into an object instead. So for example, We'll change this to an object with car, and let's set that equal to false by default, boat, false, and then maybe we'll set plane equal to true by default. Let's see what that looks like. And there you go. Now we're toggling Booleans inside of an, inside of an object. I think this is a little bit clearer. I like this example. Okay, moving on. We can also mess around with the styling. So notice that by default, if this is unchecked, you can't actually tell that it's blue. And you might want more of a persistent styling in your app. So in that case, you can say keep dash color. Make sure that's on a new line. Keep color. And if that is toggled, then you get a little bit of a blue outline by default. And the reason that might not be working is because we need to set an explicit color here. So let's just set the color equal to green. Save it, refresh the page. And there we go, now we get that green color even when it's unchecked. Another thing we can do is change the size. So let's set that to extra large. And then you can also go all the way down to extra small. And then you can also set some pixels. So you could say 120 pixels if you want a really big checkbox. <laughs> right, that's a bit wild, but you get the idea. So let's get rid of that, bring us back to a simpler example. Another thing we can do is make it dense. So a lot of Quasar's components have this dense option. And this is usually what I reach for if I'm running out of room on the screen. Now, usually if you're running out of space on the screen, you might want to change something with your UI to create a different experience. But sometimes you really do need to fit a lot on the page, in which case you can start using dense. And there we go. By making it dense, not only do we make it smaller, we also remove a bit of the uh, the margining or the space around the outside. So notice the space we've got around this boat checkbox here, whereas on this car, we've got virtually no space around the outside. So dense gives you extra space to play around with. And it's really good to know. And of course, another thing we can do is just straight out disable it. Now we can't even check this on and off. Okay, let's move on to something else. What about icons? We can come in here and say checked dash icon and set that equal to done underscore or for example, or whatever you have in your icon library. And now when it's checked, we get that done all icon. And then of course, you've also got unchecked icon. We'll set that equal to close. And there we go. And then you've got toggle dash in determinant, we'll turn that on so that I can show you the icon for that. And there we go. So we've got the undeterminate icon there, or indeterminate. <laughs> I think I've said that a few times before. It's indeterminate, not undeterminate. And then I can come in here and say in determinate dash icon and set that equal to something. Maybe question underscore mark. I think that's an icon. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got question mark, two checks, and then a close icon. So we get total control over the icons that we display there. And the last thing that I want to show you is how to call the toggle method on this component. Now you might not know this, but if we say ref on here, and then we say something like checkbox component, this makes it really easy for us to access the checkbox component. So think of this as accessing the component itself. Now what we can do is come down here, and say const checkbox component is equal to a ref, and we can just set that to nothing by default. And then what view is going to do is when this component gets mounted, this checkbox component ref is automatically 
going to be assigned to this Q checkbox component. And what that means is we can do something like this. We'll get rid of these checkboxes and say Q-button. This will make sense in a moment. At click is equal to, and then we can say checkbox component dot toggle. So essentially what we're doing here is we're calling toggle on this checkbox component. So let's see if that works. We'll set that label equal to toggle, save it, and there we go. Now we can call toggle programmatically rather than just relying on clicking on this checkbox. So that might be useful if you need a way to basically hook into this checkbox and toggle it manually. So there you go. That's the checkbox component. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you, and I'll see you in the next one.